What's up? Welcome to my second part. As I can't, like, I can't, I can't believe what I'm looking at. Like, even this camera, yeah, phone, is like a mirror in and of itself. I've also got a mirror right in front of me now, and I, I keep looking at the mirror to validate if what I'm seeing here is true. Because this is this is like the reality in waking life, and this is a camera that sometimes can be deceptive, and it's the exact same. And for me, it's like this is actually happening. <laughs> I gained an improvement so out of concern out of worry because god has been telling me you're worried you're worried you're worried and i'm like why wouldn't i why wouldn't i worry like i'm 39 going nowhere i don't want my husband like i said comparing like i don't want the man when i meet him looking at photos of mine when i was 25 26 27 and seeing a completely different woman i want him to see the same glory that's what i'm getting at and i've been concerned that all that is fading it's leaving it's getting out of the window that he's not going to be able to sorry he's going to see a massive difference of photos of mine from 10 10 12 years ago versus now and like i said there would not that would not have been a problem for me i wouldn't mind if i got to grow with the guy if he met me when i was 27 and then got to watch me age as i watched him age the two of us growing together in a marriage old together growing old together that's what i asked for i asked the lord for someone with whom i'm going to get old and then people were like, no, I'm sorry, you're gonna meet somebody already since all you're old, girl. That's going to be shocked that you used to be slender, that you used to be skinny in high school, that that's going to be shocked that you used to look a particular way. A man that meets you when you're already 54, and when he sees your photos of when you were young, he's like, whoa, you were quite a flame. No, I don't wanna be quite a flame that used to be from back in the day in the eyes of my husband. I still need to be something viable. Do you understand? Yeah, I wanted to get old with my husband. I did not want to meet my husband already since I get old. I know what I asked for in prayer. I don't like the man deserved to see me in my 20s because that's what I asked for on my early 30s and then people just made a decision to put a full stop all up in my sentence when I was not even done it's grammatically incoherent it's like proper doesn't even make any sense because it was stopped before the whole sentence made sense so it doesn't even make sense to put a full stop on it like you you retired me at 29 are you serious I wasn't even a millionaire I can understand a little bit of a, a Bill Gates or a Steve Jobs retiring at 29 or a Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg is a perfect example because he's exactly my age. Somebody like that retire, retiring at 29, retiring at 29, I get it. He'd already made his first million when he was like just basically out of diapers. But like somebody that is still facing a, like, a, a normal trajectory of growth, nobody spectacular or fascinating on the outliers of the normal distribution just like a like i'm average that way i'm growing average averagely like most people on earth you know at 29 you're you've started a career but it's ramping up a mine they just like hooked up a little bit of a full stop exclamation mark some kind of an end to my life but i still continue to draw breath so i was living without a life from 29 like i was literally just out of my mother's womb at that stage i i, I had yet to m make most the milestones that most people begin with at that age i was yet to be married i was only about to graduate get my degree finally at around that age i was yet to have children i was just ramping up a strong career getting it to where i needed it to get i was about to meet my man like yeah just just full stop where's the gang baloi you need to die like i can't say that enough they gotta die like do not suffer the witch to live the fact that my phone is glitching like this with a speech lag which is that's why you gotta die because now you're literally threatening the next career i attempted to start look at this phone of mine glitching and twitching i'm struggling to continue to speak because i am insecure about whether or not i am coherent i can't continue to speak because my phone is dying on me there are people who are glad about that that i will finally be shut up because having no resources and no real family I cannot reliably imagine myself as one that's going to get a new phone when this one dies. People know just how bad my life is. And so when you see a speech lag, you think that it's just five seconds before I finally shut up. It's only a matter of time before the iPhone 2 stops working. It's only a matter of time. And there are people who are glad. I mean, that's like two Timothy 3 type vibes. Like lovers of self, lovers of money, just so much evil. That's why like, they just gotta die. Like there's absolutely no use for them on the earth. They're destructive and they prevent people from living out joy. People can't be happy. They seek out happiness, but they can't find it because, oh wow, unfortunate for you, Pinky, you've got like some stupid friend that won't stop taking her grubby fingers and putting them in your cookie jar. Kleptomaniac, Velcro fingers, sticky hands. Can't stop stealing. Tell John, Janji. 
Always am healing in Pepoga Sangom. Talanuga and my herbs. Always shroud, shrouded in jealousy. Everything I bonang de fella bullseye. That's what's good. And then she comes and has dinner with you on the same day. Wow. Eh? Same day that she cast a spell on you, she's also having dinner with you that evening. That that that's that that's that's your girl, Binky, right? Yeah. Mmm. I mean she gotta die. Is that basic? They won't repent. When they get busted, they get angry. They get mean. When they get found wanting, they not only deny it, but they will gaslight the living daylights out of you and talk to you like what Sanya. Some of them will even go out of their way, like what my cousin and my sister and my mom try to do. Mm. To say you're crazy to a point of throwing you into a psychiatric hospital, do you know that that's what they did to me? Because I accused them of witchcraft. They organized to have me thrown into a psychiatric hospital. The doctors discharged me, saying there's nothing wrong with me. Essentially confessing and admitting that your family is treating you like rubbish like I was advised by doctors To get a restraining order against them all at that hospital Port View Life in Rodiport. That's where they took me And I was given advice by two doctors to go to the police and get a restraining order. That's what happened But not before they first tried to get me incarcerated institutionalized for finding them out so I mean I see why in the Bible it is written suffer do not suffer a witch to live because they will not only shatter impiloyako but once you find out that that's what they did they will then institutionalize you and if you are not Christian if you're not Garabo and so covered by the Holy Spirit I was so blessed that one of my doctors was a Christian and being a Christian man after he, he learned of my story he gave me counsel to take out a restraining order on my family and then went on right ahead to ask me for my testimony. So we sat basically and talked about Jesus for the rest of the session, the side, the, 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 the consultation session. That's how blessed I was. But if, if you're not Christian, if you're not a born again believer, you might not have that favor awarded you where your doctor will not only disregard your persecutors, but he will also sit down and talk about Jesus with you, basically almost pouring you some tea while you basically talk about the things of heaven. You might be dealing with a doctor that works for the kingdom of darkness that will insist that you be put on medication and that if you don't want to take it, that you be put in a stray suit, that you be further deeper, institutionalized. You might find yourself literally being checked into Stark Fontaine, perfectly healthy, because three or four of your family members, including two friends, all came in concert in agreement and told doctors lies about you. That's what these people are like. So when I say don't, they need to, they just need to like literally snuffed out because they don't say sorry. When they get busted, they band together and they insist on finishing you off. That's the earth they have created around themselves. They don't say sorry. They're so embarrassed about being busted for sorcery that they would much rather put you in a psychiatric hospital and get you placed on meds rather than walk away. At least walk away in Jafel. Let the relationship fizzle out. Let us no longer be friends, girl. I mean, that, 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 that bus has already sailed. We can agree. Do not then literally go out of your way to sabotage my entire freaking life. I've been blessed by God to make sure that every attempt that has come up against my life does not prosper. But do you know God? Anyway, we started this whole thing out by talking about my skin. My skin, which is showing all of those people flames. My, not my skin, my face. I've been worried that these imprisoning, incarcerating random fools that should not even be alive, they will prosper to go into the sunset, get married, do what they want to do, have their children, live their lives, build their legacies, get to see their faces and children, while I just sit here turning 45. So out of that concern, given that I can't just lean on the rapture, I cannot just hope that we're going to get caught up in the sky, meet the Lord in the air, because while that is definitely happening, it may or may not happen in my lifetime. Christians have been anticipating it since the, 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 the first uh, coming of Christ following his death and resurrection. They've been waiting for the rapture since then. So while things are culminating in a way that suggests that we are very, very close, it still was very, very close in 1988, like I said. So I believe in the rapture with every bone in my body, but I am not 100% certain if I am going to rise first, being the dead in Christ, or if I'm going to meet the Lord in the end, be caught up. I'm leaning more towards rise being meeting the lord in the air in other words i will still be alive when the rapture happens but it is a true possibility that i might be the dead in christ that rises first and if that's the case then give me 23 reasons why not so much the rapture is happening in 2023 but my future 
given that these witches that should not be suffered to live unless they repent are gladdening themselves in even the speech lag that I have on my iPhone. They are priding themselves in all the sorrow that I am experiencing with all of the calamities falling around all over the show in my life. Thanks to all of that worry, all of that worry, I decided that, I, like, you know, I am so insecure about my, 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 my face, how I look, because no one validates me, no one tells me anything. All I see is myself and what I think about myself. No one raises anything about me. I also don't go out there enough to have anybody tell me anything about me. Do you understand? So I'm leading, I, all I have is my own eyes. And unfortunately, my own eyes are unreliable because I, they are the eyes of a very severely traumatized woman. And when you are suffering trauma, with people trying to make you feel like you're nothing, bringing you low, flattening you to the ground, deliberately going out of their way to decimate your sense of self-worth, you will have something called a distorted body image, otherwise known as um, a body dysmorphic disorder or BDD, right? And a distorted body image will make you see something other than what is truly visible in the mirror. Anorexics and bulimics, basically people with um, eating disorders, suffer from BDD, body dysmorphic disorder, in that they see something completely different in the mirror when they look at it. They see a fat woman when they're completely emaciated. Well, self-confidence, like when, when abuse victims that have had their sense of self-worth eroded away by that level of manipulation of their persons. When they've been psychologically, mentally, physically, like sexually abused, all different kinds of abuses. When people have been endured through that, they don't see themselves anymore the way that everybody else sees them. They don't see what everybody sees. And so because of how tanked their self-esteem is, they tend to settle for some pretty horrific things in this world. If you look at women that have a history of sexual abuse, if you look at some of them, not all, some of them, the men they settle for, the men they end up married to, it's like you, like this woman could be so incredibly gorgeous, but they always just settle for like abusive, lackluster, substandard. Like I will give you an example in the media, in the entertainment industry, Gabrielle Union. She suffered rape when she was still a teenager. And look at the man she married, the first husband. And then look at Dwayne Wade. Look at both of them. That's a woman that has no idea who she is, no idea what she has. She can't see herself. And when you can't see yourself, you will let anything take you. You will let anyone take you. So absent of getting healed thoroughly and comprehensively from that trauma by a holy God that can give you everything that you deserve in spite of what you've endured, you will settle. You will settle, guys. And a, a lot of, unfortunately, we live in a world full of exploitation. We live in a world full of capitalism. And so a lot of men roam these streets, literally scouring them for women with a history of violence, a woman with a history of trauma. Dad was abusive, beating them up, beating her up or raping her uncle, brother touched her. She is gorgeous. She is smart. She's got so much going for herself, but she has that history. And absent of her finding healing, proper healing, don't come tell me about somebody putting a band-aid on cancer or spraying cologne on a corpse through therapy sessions that aren't going to help, that aren't truly going to heal, help them truly overcome, conquer, like using psychological methodologies to deal with a spiritual issue, like demons of rape, demons of abuse, whatever it is that comes in spiritually. Person goes through years of therapy. And they come out on the other side uh, even more discombobulated than before. I'm talking about real healing, true healing in Christ. True healing in Christ. Absent of people finding true healing, you will find some of the most glorious women. I'm speaking about women right now. Of course, the thing can go both ways, but I'm a woman, so I speak from that vantage point. Uh, you will find somebody that is entirely and, and like exceptionally just gift like your The Lord gave that person so much that woman she is an excellent student. She is beautiful 
there is so much going for herself but then she ends up married too even if the guy does not beat her up it's just some guy some settling thing something that she just cho chose and she, she allowed it to choose her because they tend to get they, they feel pampered by anyone at all throwing them any ounce even a small little iota of validation they don't see themselves they've got bdd body dysmorphic disorder the only person that can uproot body dysmorphic disorder out of you is jesus is jesus or a therapist that knows the lord that you're prepared to help you along in christ because i tell you i promise you you will go to one guy and he will use freud's theory of the psyche to try and deal with your problems another one will use the theories of skinner another one will use the freud's the, 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 the theories of maslow another one like papa based on how, however many theory theorists that they can come up with from the psychology from the psychology text books they will experiment on you with them when these are all basically band aids on cancer and spraying cologne on a corpse they are just putting flowers on a cadaver do you understand but they're not truly getting to the root cause jesus is the only one that can absolutely obliterate and disseminate the trauma of old such that you will see yourself through his eyes and he will be the one to cloak you and protect you during your season of bdd when you're suffering from body dysmorphic disorder god will be the one to single-handedly in and of himself wipe every fake poser like random hypocrite that comes into your life like some anybody that is a a counterfeit a fake he will be the one to exsanguinate them out of the picture he will be the one to scrape them from underneath your shoes that's what's good like the bubble gum you stood on but now you want to you want to put it in your mouth he will be the one to literally grab your hand and be like hi that's god you will pick up a rotten fruit on the floor and you will put it to your mouth to eat and god will be like don't do that that's the that's the benefit of being in christ i have had bubble gum underneath my feet and a rotten apple that i picked up on the floor and try to eat both things i have had two of them taken whipped out of my ecosystem when i came to christ when i came to christ the first guy was some oak that i met at mtn naloya to try to eat into it and god was like hey he was ripped out of my life and the, the the ripping was painful it hurt me but it was for my benefit i was protected the dude from america was worse even than the one one more walk mtn he was like stepping on bubble gum on the street that has been stepped on by a whole bunch of people birds have defecated on it other people in street corners have urinated on it and then you go and you grab that stick of gum and you try to put it into your mouth and chew it i literally did that I tried to and God was like over my dead body but then again I rose didn't I and so there is no death anymore the Lord whipped him out of the way the Lord yanked that random man out of my life kicking and screaming the Lord kept on calling him some like no brainer Siboto that was the use the word that he used I don't know what Siboto is in Eng in, in English like a person that has been ravaged by life finished off yeah and God was like I was like and I was like proper I was still trying to do that God yanked him out of the way until I sobered and when I sobered I was like okay I see what you were doing that's body dysmorphic disorder for you do you understand the Lord is the one that blocks you from marrying Siboto the Lord is the one that blocks you from eating rotten food that you pick up on the side of the street because you think it's still healthy to eat the Lord is the one that identifies an exploiter in your face a capitalist somebody taking for granted the situation at hand realizing that he has found a diamond in a rough a treasure trove realizing that he has found essentially that which other people have yet to identify the glory of and quickly snatches you marries you next thing you're in the household of the bubble gum you picked up on the floor and now when you're married to him nobody can tell the difference between the two of y'all you now both look like bubble gum underneath people's feet because this guy's brought you down to his level nobody can tell the difference between the two and so basically you get downgraded essentially as a woman you're the one that gets downgraded and like i said this thing can go both ways with men and women alike but largely it's it's you know men tend to also be the ones that exploit suffering from women because women are often put in a position to be little damsels in distress in a way that men aren't men gotta survive when life ha ha hits them whereas women sometimes survive through being taken up by men they survive through having men decide to take care of them put them in their own households but if this guy that's trying to play knight and shining army armor uh, to cinderella if he is the scum of the earth and a devil worshiper yes like it then this woman is in a bit of a bad bunch is she not is she not so because of having bdd or body dysmorphic disorder or spiritual body dysmorphic disorder when you don't see who you are the first thing is that god will block you from marrying badly he will protect you when you don't know you need protecting 
until you look in retrospect and realize that oh he had your back when you were still growing in grace when you were still recovering from your wounds when you were still being healed when you were still being patched up he protected you from basically being picked up as a diamond in the rough by somebody with some pretty grubby fingers by some dude with a kleptomania issue by some oaky with velcro hands that stick to stuff and he then runs off with it runs off with it the lord will protect you from that infiltration while he is training you up in wisdom that's what happened to me and i'm grateful but there comes a time when as a woman you basically in and of yourself recognize you have to realize that god doesn't want certain people in your life at which point you then need to start working on okay then what must i look out for and that's when you must go in god's word to basically gauge what god expects out of men and that's what you look for whatever is the biblical description of a man that makes sense in the sight of god that's what you go for that's what you gun for so you don't settle for a divorcee that's trying to marry you because the scriptures are clear about marriage and remarriage you don't settle for a guy that's got five different baby mamas and you then can't even stop to ask yourself why didn't you marry the first one the second or at least the third why are all of them just your baby mamas i had a friend my best friend my former best friend who married a dude like that with like five different baby mamas and it's like what i guess you better feel grateful that he made out of you the wife you want baby mama number six fine but at least he put a ring on you versus all the other five women he put a ring on you when you give your life over to the lord jesus christ he blocks you from marrying some baby daddy of five proper no not baby daddy of five okay baby daddy of five different baby mamas like there are so many uh, ways to check according to the scriptures what makes sense so first you get supernatural protection against your own will Osabat, say kicking and screaming god will protect you anyway and then there is wisdom and discretion that you apply as you grow in grace and as you accept that there's certain things that god does not want in your life and i believe i'm at that stage where i can't settle i won't settle because god has slapped men out the way if i would throw myself into a situation of that nature um i would basically be saying god no thank you i don't want your protection thanks for the first two guys that you knocked out the way but the third one that walks up uh, I'm, I'm running with it i made a decision not personally to first of all stop responding to direct messages to wait on to just as i asked them in prayer supernaturally orchestrate a romance for me why have i stopped responding to dms because whoever it is that would dm me would have seen my life online and so seen the diamond in the rough that i am the thing that has been abandoned neglected thrown away abused but of high value so that's a man that already in Jafela by mere virtue of dropping me a dm is evidencing that he has observed that i very likely might be the kind of woman to respond to a dm and actually go and marry someone that asked me out on a direct message that that suggests that this is a man that saw that i i i am kind of in a desperate situation and so i will allow myself kilo shelwa on the internet i don't i don't know if you understand what i'm saying like it's a jungle out there the internet is full of rubbish as a christian woman like you have no business responding to somebody direct messaging you that you don't know that you can't check the track record off like it's not two youtubers with equally sizable channels that are getting into each other's dms on some do you want to do a video together and then upon meeting they fall in love it's not the same thing when someone that's just a, a regular rando out there in the wilderness not doing anything on social media dms you who is on social media when your channel is still small or your facebook page is still small that's a, 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 an alarm that should be ringing in your head that's a person that's just always scouring the internet for bargains two for the price of one three for the price of one so when 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 some when a vagrant when an, when an internet vagrant direct messages you when you're undergoing a lot of sorrow he is taking for granted that usually nobody responds to me when i hassle them over dms but this woman is suffering and she needs any company at all she needs anyone at all to tap on her shoulder and so she might respond because a lot of them tend to just be scouring the internet vagrants dropping into all different kinds of women's dms and out of a hundred dms that they drop in like a week they anticipate that they will get responses from just two or three people and that's enough for them there are people who are like that 
Every cute girl on Facebook DM, 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 DM. And out of the 50 that he has DM'd in the week, he trusts that one or two will respond. He's not even asking for massive numbers. He's just asking for the one or two people that are gullible enough to do that. So if a person is dropping a DM into your space that is a vagrant on the internet and you respond, you are like one who has helped him win a lottery. You have just like seven, seven, seven. And if at all you are the caliber or like basically a high caliber woman that nonetheless does not see herself, more so does this guy think that he happened upon a gold mine. So I stopped responding to direct messages because I saw that my solitude is clear, my loneliness is stark, my loneliness is stark, the abuse and the persecution I'm enduring is evident to everybody because I'm sharing my testimony online. Therefore, nobody is safe to respond to. Nobody. There is nobody that is safe to respond to. How then? Others might ask. Do you expect, Karaba, that you're ever going to get help at all? There are ways. God knows what doors he has closed and what he has opened and he knows that I cannot trust DMs. Is that basic? There is a way around getting to me that it is going to not um, give eerie or give creepy. But you see, these exploiters capitalize on your BDD. They, they, they scan, they tend to study your environment, realize that you are a diamond in the rough, and then go on and make like a proper miner, go deep into the ground. In other words, they go into darkness and they dig you out. They, 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 they use witchcraft, all different kinds of weird, strange, eerie stuff. There are men in this world that are so rejected by their immediate societies. They're such no-brainers in their immediate societies. Like every girl just doesn't want them anymore. Like he is, he's got a very bad reputation where he comes from. And the, the only treasure trove where they can find gems is the internet. Where no one knows them. No one knows them. No one knows that, hey, that's Tepo from Zone 14, guy. Don't even bother, Joe. Don't. Ma Zhuang Dengi, he is a, a, a reject. So if he rocks up with you in his arms, you're just gonna look like a girlfriend. Like, is she being queen? That's what's good. You're gonna look like a, a, a girlfriend. You're gonna look like a girlfriend. You're gonna look like the girlfriend of a fallen soul. Like, if a guy can say, Boto, say, everybody, if a guy's a. a Siboto, a, a finished off man. That in that that everybody knows for smoking glue. He's on dry. He's a he's a junkie. Like to buy glue. He's basically a hobo. Like the the local hobo. They, let's think about it that way. My phone is giving me so many problems. Ah oh, goodness. The local hobo that brings uh. Imagine okay. Let me rather say it this way. Imagine a dude that's always begging from house to house or the guy that's always asking you spare change change He doesn't go to work. Everybody wakes up in the morning comes back and he's still on the streets hustling He's always just smelling like hi on marijuana uh, Nobody even knows where he truly lives, but he is like just a vagrant in the community Everybody greets him. Hi, it's Hepo. Bye, it's Hepo. But nobody takes him seriously. He is just a person of He's finished off. He's got like a puza face and he is a, a, a no-brainer. Do you understand what I'm saying? In that community, he's basically practically a hobo. And he's always in the gassy, gathering dust, doing nothing. Now, if that guy were to suddenly one day rock up with a girlfriend on his arm, what would you think of that woman? What would you think of the chick that rocks up with Tepo, the guy that's always smoking glue? Tepo, the guy that's always d dragging marijuana? Tepo, the dude that's always asking for spare change every time people are coming back from work, getting off the taxis. What? Or the Tepo, the guy, or that, that or, or, or Sutra Kileng, his skin has gone completely dark because of drug use. Where when when uh, when Tepo suddenly brings home to his gassy, what are you gonna think of her? The woman that is holding Tepo's hand, what are you gonna think of her? You are going to think that ah, Tepo probably one day when he went to the Shabin picked that girl up. So you're gonna see her as just another drunk. Another chick with uh, another person with whom Tepo also takes drugs. The two of them are like drag on marijuana. Bali too. They they spend the day, the day all day together in in the gassi. In these very circles where everybody's busy ruining their lives, squandering their inheritance. Essentially, as a woman, you stand the risk when you settle for any of these guys. You stand the risk of being literally looked at as Ishi Bean Queen. Some random chick or dope way. Inja, but that in his own community is well known for what he is but you come from out there you're not from his community you're not the person getting off the taxi after work with Tepo being like hi mom like Togo uh, do you have maybe like a five randy yeah no 
You're not the person that knows tap once I'm I tap or can't do now. What do you do with the money every day? I'm gonna the five grand that you just keep on like uh, parting ways with. You're not Mam Togo, you're not sis Belinda. You're not Oslerato. You are not I, I can say it him, be you are outside of the circle of influence of Tepo. And so when Tepo cleans up a little bit to come to a date with you, having met you online, you will think he's a reasonable guy until he brings you around his neighborhood and everybody now is underestimating you because you're with him. You're just another Shabeen queen. You don't want your stats to tank like that. You don't want some man to tank your statistics and when you've got body dysmorphic disorder you will walk around with tepo the tepo the saboto tepo the saboto you do you understand you will walk around with him and it'll take two three years or maybe you giving him his first child for you to wake up and notice that you frankly made yourself a shabeen queen by simply being associated with a shabeen king you will wake up and see that his whole community crunch up about boning and next but by then you're already his baby mama by then you're already his wife and now you're a couple, a Shabin couple. Kelika lobu la seven piece yabu tuko kasi. Lereki lereki se bujwa la once and for all. How about you just do that? Some of these men are that finished off in their own communities, and they will slide into your DMs, knowing that mobile ling tenga bako no shella with ease, given that all the girls avoid them like the plague. But you don't know that. You don't know that. And when you're suffering, more so are they in the position to give you money? They can provide for you. You will let this guy help you along. That's what this guy from America was like. But God scooted Sibotos out of the way because I was suffering from body dysmorphic disorder. I still have BDD, but my perspective has been corrected. I know I need to wait on God. I don't know what for. I will know when what comes my way that I'm supposed to embrace is here. I know that I will know because I serve a faithful God. But in the run up to, I'm insecure. In the run-up to, I'm self-doubting, I'm self-defeating. In the run-up to, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. So when I look, must be lean. All I see a lot of days is this woman that's just getting old with nothing. I see an aging face. I see an aging body. I see an aging everything. And I'm freaking out that when my husband comes, if that's what's gonna happen, if not the rapture, is he going to see a woman whose former glory was greater than her present glory? I'm not ready to lose my former glory because I don't have anything to show for it. A lot of women get married when they're still in their prime. I have gone past mine, at least chronologically. Biologically too, apparently, allegedly, I'm geriatric. Being that I feel as old as I do, I started going on the internet to investigate ways to reverse aging. Ways to reverse aging, do you understand? Over and above, you know, treatments like retinol, vitamin C, uh, you get my point, niacinamide, tretinoin, oh, never mind topical skincare actives. Y'all know I've, I've, I've been there, done that, that whole, I have explained my skincare routine in one of the videos that I did recently. Um, which one was it? I think I've already deleted them on my phone, but yeah, you guys know if at all you follow me with any level of seriousness that I recently just did a whole skincare uh, routine video, a uh, series, right, where I was showing you my whole thing. So over and above that, I was like, what more can I do? Because I felt like retinol might improve the texture of my skin and vitamin C, but what about like a sagging face? What, what like that, 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 that's the kind of stuff that requires surgery. Like when your face does, just starts to fall and droop. When your neck starts becoming like a turkey's neck uh, type setup thing. Like, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't, well, um, the best way that I can keep my body from aging is, is by exercise, which I try to do. But when it comes to the face and, and the neck, I've been, I've been freaking out. I've been worried like no man's business that a, 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 like a, things are happening at like record speed here. Next thing, my jowls are going to be chilling around this area. My, <laughs> okay, I know that's an exaggeration. My, na my, na my nasobladial, is it nasobladial, folds, basically smile lines and that stuff that kind of sags go, goes down. I can't, I keep looking in the mirror. Every night when I'm watching either Netflix or when I'm in the bathroom after washing my face or whatever in the kitchen making um, Preparing dinner the microwave that has a mirror on it like the 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 surface of the microwave is reflective But it's opaque even though it's opaque you can see your face in it and, like the surfaces that I look into 
I'm always just looking uh, into the grooving, like, you know, smile lines, my jowls dropping. Guys, like, I've got a severe case of body dysmorphic disorder. Like, severe. Like, I feel like, I, yo, I've got two photos back there of me when I was a kid. Like, when I was 20, 21. And I keep looking at those photos and comparing to now. And on some, what's changed? What's changed? What's changed? Uh, is my smile similar? Or now when I smile, are there like folds, creases, like here, uh, type of, what, like what's going on? When I like, oh guys, I would never have worried about age like that, I promise you. I was not that vain. I would never have worried about age like that if I had something to show for it. If I had kids, a husband, a life, like basically, why do I have wrinkles? Because I've seen life. I keep looking f out for these things. And so I have recently developed a, a little obsession with researching anti-aging stuff on the internet and while now i'm on a regimen for skincare i then because i am on a regimen for skincare i then also got recommended other things uh, on the side panels go youtube to do and there are these women that swear by facial exercises on the internet like face like what do you call this thing face exercises basically i work out my physical body and i know how painful muscles get when you're working out to a point where you gotta stop now whoa like what's going on so i've never believed in facial exercises because i have never been hurt or felt sore in my life before doing basic things with the face like smiling laughing really hard or pulling a funny face like i've never ever felt muscle pain on my face ever from basic facial movements and even when you go to the extreme of pulling a funny face uh so i i never be I've, so essentially what i'm trying to explain to you guys is that i didn't believe in face exercises doing anything because i did not even think it was possible to work out face muscles in the face the way that you can work out muscles on your body and so therefore get toned body like a toned thigh toned calves i can i swear by toning of the body but i could not for the life of me swear by toning of the face so one of these days i was like let me see these these women on the internet what they're talking about and their views were just ridiculous they were like quite astronomical as my phone and the speech lag it's it's troubling me so so much but anyway i'm eventually gonna finish off this whole discussion because i think i already did um half an hour now I'm, I'm doing the next half an hour then i'm done right i'm only doing two parts there's no need to do more than that type of establishment thing it, for me it was about their views um the fact that there's so many views so anecdotal evidence right uh my thing with anecdotal evidence or evidence based on people's experiences is even peer-reviewed um evidence or respectable evidence by doctors is to a certain extent supported by anecdotal populations by people people are the ones that they test on um so i run with um advice that people give because people are the ones that actually inform even medical journals you know the the the, the, the findings they're in are based on how it is that they made observations on human trials so i run with it so for me when 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 somebody has got like 2.5 million views on a video where they're doing strange little movements with their lips ah for me it's like okay if this thing was a sham if it was a joke if it was a teaser if it didn't make any sense 2.5 million people would not have watched it it would not have been that proliferated and on top of that like before i even watched these videos i, I googled do face exercises work and a couple of board certified doctors dermatologists were like guys it's anecdotal like they, they what they say is that this is what these people say if you want to do it do it but there's just no research behind it there's no research there's no studies so i was tempted to run with what they were running with but again even in their videos i went to the comment sections i went to the comment sections of these videos where they're basically trying to refute that face exercises work and the people commenting therein were like i swear by it it's worked for me it worked for my grandmother like comment sorry comment after comment after comment after comment after comment after comment and i was like as in these people are even coming to doctors saying guys i know that there's no research on it but it doesn't mean it doesn't work right because i i swear by it because it changed my neck it removed my double chin it did a b c d etc so after that i was like okay let me check these exercises out i clicked on one lady that does a face pilates face pilates right huge fan of regular body pilates um and she does face pilates and uh i clicked on her video because it had like 2.5 million views or whatever 
and I scrolled down the comment section before I even watched her video and there were all these women talking about how it is that yo I saw a difference in a week yo I saw a difference in two weeks yo it's been a month and I'm killing it yo I was like yo uh uh Nick it goes um I'm gonna try it I'm gonna try it I, I felt like they look silly I felt like they look stupid but like when so many people are swearing by this stuff I was like mm, what's it gonna hurt what's it gonna hurt guys three to four days ago three to four it's only been like four days I started doing these like strange exercises like blowing like a little fishy or whatever like oh oh you know opening my mouth and close okay fine look you can go online I'm not gonna show you what in the world I did okay because I feel dumb they look silly they look silly mm, like mm, mm. they look silly they do so I'm not gonna go on right ahead and look silly in front of you guys but there's a lot of these ladies that you will find on the internet I started to do these and intentionally focused on whether or not it was hurting my muscles as in you know when you maintain a, a, a posture a position in exercise like a squat how it starts to hurt and the longer you maintain that squat it hurts even longer yeah I started to do that because I've never really hurt from moving my face maybe it's because I'm always talking right I talk a lot so I move my face a lot I've never experienced facial soreness when talking but that's just the thing though about even exercise we walk all the time we uh, sit and uh, we, 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 we sit and stand and sit and stand all the time we go up the stairs at work all the time and that's what our bodies are used to minimum right and so you don't feel sore after going up two flights of stairs in your office because you're always going up two flights of stairs but if you go up 10 flights of stairs then you're gonna feel it like back in the day my my friends and i yeah whatever don't have that anymore but like my friends and i used to do almost every year the 702 walk the talk and i remember the first year that we did it we did the five kilometer which was the smallest one right or was it two kilometers we did the smallest one five i think it was five kilometers and one of my girls was like oh brave on some guys let's do the 30 kilometer or the eight kilometer yeah then she was like let's do the eight kilometer and my cousin was like don't underestimate walking sister girl like we you and i we're all amateurs here none of us go to the gym at every day we do, none of us are active no one here is an athlete let's just stick to 2.5 kilometers or five whatever was the lowest one we settled for that one but there was somebody brave on some bashing their chest on a mountaintop like king kong on some let's do eight kilometers or 15 kilometers or something yeah you know not 30 nobody ever was talking about doing the 30 but all the others and then my cousin sort of kind of brought us all down on some let, let's keep it light because y'all don't know what in the world you're going to experience maybe next year we'll do the eight kilometer we we ultimately did ramp up to eight kilometers but no we never ever got to 15 k right uh type establishment thing i remember uh, wait see, we we started out feeling all excited and happy like thinking we got this we're young we're all in our 20s like for crying out loud like yeah proper early to one of us some of us were even in our early 20s fresh out of our mother's wombs basically and uh, thinking Wuti, we can slay everybody mm. by the time we got to the halfway mark we were limping by the time we finished we were basically crawling trying to get to the finish line and then we got to sit down and relax at uh, the grass area uh, for a couple of minutes before it was now time for us to go home standing up from that relaxed position we had to use each other's bodies we had to use anything around a tree just to help us get up that like the, the pain already was starting to set in right there just after exercising and we were yeah it was rough to even drive the way that our bodies were so sore type thing and we would be like zombies for pretty much the whole week thereafter like it was just a rough waking up sleeping like you know when you've worked out for the first time at the gym you were lifting weights at night when you're sleeping you will get woken up by tossing in your bed twisting to face your body the other side you will be woken up on some uh, you will feel it you will feel it you will get out of your sleep just because you wanted to move from the left side of the bed to the right we were like that in the office from walking we were not running we were just walking something that we did all the time i personally had been walking up and down campus covets what is this for 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 so i was a part-time student i had done trips across vits at least once or twice a week i would go from east to west campus uh, for whatever purpose because at the time when i was working for uh, in brum park right go liberty life 
not Liberty Life, sorry, that was my ex boyfriend, but like on NetBank, I would have um, lectures for Vits Plus were in West Campus. But uh, Liberty Life is on East Campus The side of it is on East Campus So you would have to walk all the way across that bridge etc To make it so I used to make such trips as those uh, Every day I had to walk up the Mandela Bridge um, Across the Mandela Bridge It was before I got a car um, Mandela Bridge right To go home And then I would walk the whole long distance To come back home Because where I stay uh, The taxis drop you off quite far From where it is that you finally get home So it's quite the walk Type establishment thing That was That was um a woman that was you know i have had I've, i had had up until that point my own fair share of walking but like that 702 walk the talk showed me flames it made me realize that don't um come on don't give me a speech like don't underestimate exercise just because of the fact that you've done it before the body is used to certain amounts of exercise that we endure it through naturally as we go through life naturally as we go through life but if you push yourself and exert yourself that's when you start to tone develop muscles get stronger and stronger so my face i'm a talker right my whole ministry is premised around talking been talking all my life it's just the thing i do i've got the gift of the gab so i'm always gesturing my facial my, my facial muscles etc so i imagine that because i'm always talking it would take so a lot more i can talk for hours you guys know that like hours i can talk right uh, it would take a lot more for a person that's always walking much like what it was with me back in the day always going across this campus always uh walking to over mandela bridge whatnot it would take like exerting myself a lot more in the same craft right in the same thing that i'm doing this truck or whatever it is that's outside must go the scooter it would take exerting myself a lot farther out for me to see results i did not start developing muscles on my body even though i had a relatively active young life by active i'm not speaking exercise i never used to work out i never went out of my way to go to the gym right uh back when i was on the come up but i i was subjugated to the tyranny of my mom always moving to houses that were always so far from school but not far enough for me to need to use a taxi so i would walk very long distances to school not like in the blazies but you get my point um or if not to school from home i would walk very long distances to where i would get the taxis to get home and once i would get dropped off at home i would have to walk another long distance to get home i've always just my mom's always moved to like weird places like never really regarding that she's got a daughter that doesn't have a car anyway whatever so i've been active for those reasons i've been getting burned by the sun even though i was trying to duck it all my life due to the fact that i've been work walking a lot more than the regular teenage girl does because of where my mom always used to live it was always just so far from everything uh and then once i got out of my teenage years i was always walking really far and really fast to taxis to my offices that were also strangely buried in little corners um instead of just like right there I've, I've never worked for a company where a taxi drops me off right at the door like i've always just walked like it's i don't know what's up with that i think it was god it was grace i had to be at fit because i was lazy so i guess that's how god got me working out back in the day because it, it gave me a boost and i see so um that that's what's good but however when i was at mtn i made an, an effort given that it also came highly recommended by the company that I'd rather use the stairs instead of using the lift you know uh, for your so for your own health but also for the um energy of the company like save power instead of using a lift like proper just use the stairs guys if you can don't go up one flight of stairs plus don't irritate everybody in the lift by going up just one floor etc type thing so i always used to use the stairs and m10 was a very big building so you would walk uh, uh, multiple times across like phase one and phase two across that bridge just to get to like one meeting etc so it was somewhat of an active lifestyle for somebody that is used to walking that much running after taxis running after whatever walking up across campus if at all you want to see any improvement at all in your weight losing weight or if you want to see any improvement at all in your body in terms of toning of your muscles you're gonna have to exert yourself beyond a person that is just sedentary always just sitting not always using the lift barely moving an inch always getting into their car as soon as they are out of the office and into their house as soon as they are um what is this they're out of the car or into the store and back into the car because they always make sure that they wait for a parking spot that is right by the store people like those 
those sedentary guys, it will take, once they start going to the gym, you will notice that they lose weight very fast. And they also start to tone, if at all they've got that kind of a body. They tone their muscles a lot faster because they, they, their bodies are just in, in, like in constant atrophy, near on atrophy. Their bodies are, are near, are always constantly near muscular dystrophy, essentially. That's what's good. These people are like that. And so their bodies immediately just kind of, they get re-energized, juiced fast because they are not used to a certain level of activity but if you've got a lot of activity going on in your body already uh, you, it's gonna take a lot more for you to really tone you're gonna have to push yourself exert yourself a lot farther at the gym because you already have got a baseline you um uh, what is this equilibrium there is already a baseline level of nonchalant la da fitness in you just by mere virtue of having the kind of lifestyle that you have so when i started exercising working out it took me so long to see results yo I, I never thought i could ever build muscle like ever because it took so long for me to see any muscle development because my muscles were already lackluster looking from quite a bit of activity that i was doing i had to really push myself that's why i ended up working out for two two and a half hours at some point every single day i was striving and striving and striving but the moment i saw the smallest little muscle development the smallest little growth of muscle that's when i went in hard the reason why i pushed to that many hours of exercise is because after a very long time i finally started to see muscle development and that's when i pushed uh it's also one of the biggest reasons why when i'm exercising you barely see any facial expressions on my face um i look like i'm not even breathing it it takes quite a lot for me to get to a point where i feel like i'm really exerting myself that's the reason why yeah so that's like yeah and and when i don't do all of my hours i feel defeated and stuff like that because it takes so much to build me i believe one of the biggest reasons why that's even the case is because i had a baseline of quite an active lifestyle as a kid well active fish for someone who doesn't go to the gym uh yeah um well i realized that the same thing is likely true as well with my face in that i'm always talking my ministry is premised around talking i can talk for hours on end one two three four parts and yeah it is what it is so, so uh, talking is a face face exercise do you understand so in order for me i imagined to benefit from face exercises i would have to do a lot more than just the regular person on the internet is doing because i already use so many of my face muscles every single day and i'm also quite animated in the way that i talk i, I gesture a lot etc i also sing a lot and whatnot so i imagine that if your body is anything to go by you take forever to build muscle on the body uh, so maybe you're like the same on the face too so i basically went a kind of extreme all of these exercises that i was seeing online one day i just sat here and I kept doing them until I felt pain in my face because that for me is like okay now I know that a muscle is working if I don't feel pain nothing's happening all right if in a squat I don't feel like I need to get up now or I will fall on the ground uh, yeah I, I, I don't stop it's called pushing yourself until failure until the point of breaking you need to push yourself to a point where you feel like I can't anymore well I basically worked out my face muscles till failure if that makes sense at all I worked out my face muscles until failure I did some whatever it is that they were doing on the internet but i wanted to feel myself getting you know uncomfortable i had to feel sore i had to feel sore i couldn't just run with you know a little fishy exercise or a little swallowing exercise or whatever and and not feel anything because then on that day it's like if at all my not my my body's my thigh muscles don't go anywhere when i do a squat for two seconds then i guess my cheeks muscle my cheek muscles will also not go anywhere if i do a facial exercise for two seconds i gotta hold it a lot longer and that's what i started doing and um the first day i i felt pain around like this area my cheek area you guys know like two days ago i came here and i told you about some sunscreen application process because i had that white costy sunscreen that's the one thing that i feel like has also helped along but more than anything it's the face exercises that i've also noticed the improvement of like just by looking at my face in the mornings when i wake up open my eyes i've got a mirror right here i noticed um what do you call this a plumpness like roundness in my cheeks like fat returning to my cheeks so a, a, a basically a natural facelift i found that that happened you guys please just go watch my videos from like two days ago two days ago two three two three days ago mm -mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. yeah two three days ago and see if there is no difference 
on my face especially this area like marama mona mona like my cheeks they're plumper you guys they are oh, come on don't lie <laughs> i feel like i've got so much more cheek fire yeah yo look guys come on just go and watch the videos from just a couple of days ago my face has plumped it has plumped up you guys like okay i'm gonna I'm gonna sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star quiet, okay? We're closing my mouth because if I don't speak, uh, my silence detector is gonna remove that whole section, okay? Yeah, uh, please ignore the parts here where I'm a little bit lighter. It's my, I'm peeling, I told you. Uh, my skincare is like, yeah. So try to like disregard the uneven tone and just look at my contours. My what nasal, bladial, my love lines, look at that first and foremost, and just my cheek area, like this, this here, this whole section, Lena, look at that, okay? Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let me just improve the lighting so that you can see a little better. And then go and compare that twinkle, twinkle little star flat face to two or three days ago, two or three days ago. If this thing has done this for me in just two or three days, okay, what in the world do I stand to benefit after like a month two three of continuing in this state okay let's do the twinkle again this section over here is gonna it's slightly lighter i bet you can see that right the treatment that i'm using for my face that's removing the hyperpigmentation first started to peel around my my chin area and so my chin area is lighter than everywhere else and now it's just peeling a whole bunch around my my love lines uh they were dry at some point and now the skin has peeled off and so it's lighter so you might see uh it's perfect that that's happening because you get to then see the demarcation where my love lines are at because they're a little bit lighter and look at how plump like uh, pretty much like like guys like my i've gotten a facelift okay one minute me is okay. That is as relaxed as my face can get. I'm not trying to, you know, lift anything up or whatever. Um, and I believe that that whole facelift, mild mini natural facelift that happened in just three days um, is because of my facial exercises. I went extreme. I, I, I pulled a fishy face and kept it there until I felt sore around this area. <laughs> and also, <laughs> these, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do these facial exercises. They are diatechisa. And I mean, if, if you are happy to look like a joke, do you? But I don't want to look like a joke. I'm always doing like funny, uh, like I get for crying out loud to not want that to be part of my funny bone. All right. Yeah. Funny little exercises. Looking up and then swallowing. Okay, I can't do mm -mm 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 while swallowing. It's just, it's impossible, right? But like such an exercise as that and just holding it in, like basically grabbing your tongue and hitting your palate over and over and over and over and over again while you face up, 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 um, is tightening to the neck, apparently. Um, and then the fishy face apparently tightens the, the cheek area and you feel it, uh, okay? Uh, the O random you feel it here you feel that the muscles are getting tighter and if you hold it for any amount of time you f you actually start to feel it much like the same way that you would feel your your thigh muscles getting sore after leg day at the gym you feel it on your face uh, the ones that, that I felt the next morning even when I woke up were underneath my neck where the, that swallowing one the one where you hit in your tongue against your palate up and up and up and up and up and up and up again yeah the next morning when I woke up it's almost like I had a sore throat the way that my muscles around there were sore that for me was like it's an actual exercise it's an actual exercise I pushed myself and after three days you guys I saw this like I don't know if you can see the difference but I'm literally plumper in just three days so I was like well God gave me a way out God gave me a way out of my sorrow concerning exercise not exercise sorry but like my aging right I'm all worried that I'm aging at the speed of lightning 
And so I start like, you know, per puckering my lips like a little fishy. I started doing stuff like that while sitting around uh, watching um, Netflix, watching YouTube, watching, uh, basically doing my edits. I started doing that and it paid off in just three days evidencing to me that god has not forsaken me he has not left me evidencing to me that there is a way to even bring fatness to my cheeks that i allegedly apparently lost i've never gotten such a plumping from what in the world plumps the face guys it it's basically has the effect of what do you call this thing botox but like in the cheeks like it gave me padding and i don't really have a history of fat cheeks other than when i was a little bit chubbier so i guess i'm getting something that i never even had before like i've never had high cheekbones yeah and i'm getting a little bit of you know extra cheek like what they work so all that anecdotal evidence it's showing on my face in just five days i'm stepping up i'm keeping it oh guys look at my face it's so it's so round i don't you guys see what i see or am i am i just guys come on do you not see plumper cheeks in this region if you watch me for any amount of time am i not plumper here it's not because i'm gaining weight you guys it's face exercises i'm not gaining weight you've seen me on the dance floor you've seen my body if anything i'm striving to lose weight so this here is firming of facial muscles and it turns out that facial muscles tone a lot faster than the body because after just three days these are the results like guys come on drooping i don't think so but i was insecure and as a result of insecurity i started doing face exercises thinking my face is falling apart <laughs> and my cheeks got plumped <laughs> my cheeks got plumped you guys so i'm doing little fish exercises you go on the internet like there's a lot of women a lot a lot like a lot of them that do these videos so I, I don't gotta tell you exactly which one I watched because frankly it was a lot of them and they all repeated more or less the same kinds of exercises um, but yeah my face is plumper now guys look at me come on like you can't deny that it's plumper it is like a lot plumper like y'all can't deny that are you gonna go are you gonna go on right ahead and deny that are you gonna deny that don't deny it look at it from the side mm -hmm. my face has plumped out meaning that i have a future meaning that this is the first reason out of the 23 reasons why i've got a future husband coming and not so much the rapture like the lord gave me a plump face because i was worried he went on right ahead and made me like basically in all of my worry i checked out plumping face exercises videos on youtube followed them because i'm worried about my aging face and then i got like a, a free facelift even though um I, I i like i said body dysmorphic disorder i don't even think it was that bad uh the situation on my face oh come on man yo this phone ne? i don't know what to do to myself type establishment thing like proper at this point it is what it is but yeah i, I, I prospered to get a facelift uh, okay like facelift is quite the, the extreme but i feel like the exercises are working and as the days progress you might see more and more improvement if at all i see visible extra improvement over the next couple of days i will mention it i will speak about it i will say guys look my cheeks are even more plump or i'm gaining these benefits around my neck area like this is what's happening i'm gonna see what do you think and then you'll be the judge of that but like god is telling me that i'm worried for nothing but since i'm worried here i'm worried for nothing but since i am worried tata so women settling 
don't do it just wait on god ask him and he will even let you know when you're freaking out for nothing when you're worried for nothing when you are basically throwing out your toys out the cot if when you're throwing your toys out the cot mahala fella god will tell you you're throwing your toys out the cot stop he will enable you and if at all you're so worried he will then be like just do some face exercises and get yourself a free facelift and that's what will happen so 23 reasons why i'm getting married or why my breakthrough is commencing in 2023 i might not have 23 reasons right now but i certainly have got one and it's that i found a face plumping regimen You know what I think it is? I think it's muscle, but it could be fat. You know why? Actually, I don't know what it is. I can't really do the math. I also slap my cheeks a lot <laughs> when I'm applying the, the sunscreen to blend it. So that might also be what's going on. Go check out the video where I was talking about sunscreen and blending it in because it's like giving me a white cast, etc. That whole process of blending in my sunscreen, I dab it on instead of moisturizing it in like that so as to not mix my products too much on the face because i layer quite a lot and i think it's the combination of slapping my cheeks like a whole bunch like slapping it's like collagen production i think happens from all that slapping <laughs> ain't no i turn a turn i gonna slap me i'll slap myself it's fine so i slap my cheeks a whole bunch just in, in blending in my my sunscreen and then I also do face exercises. So I don't know, guys. I'm giving you these tips and hints because they work for me. Look. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm 39. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm 40 next year. That's my straight face. And that's how round I'm out here looking um, with all this face fat. Like, yo, Botox, a schmotox, a poverty, like, really has helped me get stuff done to make sure that I never would have happened upon these lessons if I wasn't poor. So, Romans 8:28, all things were got together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. Just look at how round my cheeks are, you guys. I'm born again. That's why my cheeks are round at 39. I was worried about them sagging and God made on went on right ahead and and like <sighs> ballooned like oh like helium helium in my cheeks and now I got baby fat. Amen. Mama Raming Bonang Kinalema Rama. I hope you've been edified in Christ's name. Prokela ngo jola lebo put masle saba abora. But ako patal la botox. So mara you got botox in a fishy face. Is that basic? Just go pout like a fishy girl. Mmm. Mmm. Just do that for like three minutes and then tell this guy put my dress on grand me nanye botox yako because grand shop jonga ma rama wam cake nari vanger eke so right put my dress go back mesh your gusheshe in the corner there something i don't want you put my dress because you've got no laza i don't want you put my dress because you've got demons i don't want you put my dress because it's time to tagata put my dress on your corobella me nanye grand Botox yako. Grab. I like eye interventions, but my zesa. I need for me to my injection underneath the eyes, me to give me a boost. I want for my lip fillers, welcome me put my zesa, cause all I got mm, is the fishy face. I got a pout, put my zesa jonga up. Mm, oh, 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 oh. Man, cut that put my face from saying oh a million times. Listen, he's clapping his sunscreen. I get a natural facelift, so I need dingy. I keep on it with Botox, put my face. And you are dingy, I'm a fillers, walk up, put my face. And you are dingy, I'm a steroids, walk up, put my face. Get right, get right, and this out, Pautisha. Oh, 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 ooh. ooh. the best thing is clap on your sunscreen and then i'm good to go put my lisa so goodbye signing out in christ's name cran k 
Don't say I don't warn you, ladies. But I hold strong. I hold back. Like a DM go Facebook. Flee. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Like what put my face about calling a corobella. Pumagib.